You know, there's a difference between keep the law and do the law. Mm. One word means treasure, guard, esteem. The other means work. Now, God loves absolutely. We're not there yet. That's our goal. That's the mark that we press toward where we love absolutely. But while we're working on getting there by the help of God and through his grace, uh, we acknowledge that we come short. We ask his forgiveness for those times that we didn't see clearly how to love this particular neighbor. Sometimes we, we don't see clearly how to love them, and so we miss it. God never misses. We need the church to remind those who are seeking for the good that it is found in Christ. The study, the study, the study. Law gospel is a huge aspect in our tradition, something that we mm-hmm. focus on extently, you know? Yeah. And when it comes to repentance— it's no difference. So in our confession, it's touched on in multiple areas. Mm-hmm. And oh, if anyone's interested, like we have a, a app called Evangelical Catholic that mm-hmm. you can follow through us as we march through these confessions and things of that nature that dictate and pinpoint and explain the historic faith. So in the small card articles, there's this part that I found about repentance mm. that delves more into it also. Luther puts forward the proper biblical teaching about repentance which is the interplay between the law and the gospel. The law reveals sin and drives us to cling to Christ alone. The gospel, imparted by means of word and sacrament, confronts and soothes consciences. This interplay of the law revealing the sin and the gospel forgiving and restoring is what true repentance is all about. Mm. It's a great way of looking at it to where it shows that we've been talking about the law driving somebody, exposing their sin, and the gospel comforting. How you can't leave one out. You can't just say, oh, say you hate sin, forget it, don't do it. No, you still need the absolution, Christ. You still need that part of it. Mm -hmm. So the recognition of it being law and gospel, something that we see all over, but applying it to repentance is so helpful. Yeah, mm-hmm. it is, man, and it's a it's a game changer, bro. Like, and it's it it to me it opens up the Bible to you, right? Yeah, you know, like I would venture to say, if you don't understand or haven't been exposed to the distinction between law and gospel, it's kind of like the Bible is a closed book. Now you can obviously read the Bible and, and hear good news, and and God could bless you that way. But in terms of seeing that flow from the first page to the last how God speaks with these two words, his word of law, his word of gospel, and then understanding how that impacts us as sinner saints, right? As Christians, we're both sinners and saints simultaneously. Mm -hmm. And in our baptism, we've been marked by Christ. We've been, the trial name has been placed on us. And our entire life is one of dying and rising, dying and rising. And that's what our baptism is. We are the baptized. And if you don't understand that interplay between law, gospel, repent, uh, contrition, and faith, you will inherently add your own works to appease God's wrath, Mm -hmm, to use Luther and Melanchthon's language. Like, what the law is going to do to you, that that crushing, Mm -hmm. you will try. You will inherently try to get back right with God on your own merit. Right. And that's just what's mm-hmm. going to happen. And that's either going to lead to pride, where you're beating your chest thinking you actually pulling it off, like, look mm-hmm. at me, God, you said do the Daniel fast. I did the Daniel and Hezekiah fast. Mm. Right? So you're going to get cocky, or you're going to be filled with despair. Because mm-hmm. you're going to be like, man, I, I'm trying, God, but I keep dropping the ball. Maybe I'm not really repentant. Maybe I'm not really sorry or contrite. Mm-hmm. And... Maybe you don't want nothing to do with me, yeah. and you and you and you veer off, and that's the unfortunate things that happen when you don't have those two things bound together: contrition and faith, contrition mm-hmm. and faith, law and gospel. Right, like they're a couple. It's you know what I mean? It's a very dangerous place yeah. to be. This place you just mentioned. It's a very dangerous pla- place to be. Like. Yeah, yeah, that part. I guess one thing about it that 
makes it so difficult um, for so many believers, not having really been taught regarding the distinction of law and gospel, the the first error that people make is that they think, okay, well, the Old Testament, that's all law, and the New Testament is all gospel, and so that's how you divide law and gospel, Old Testament law, New Testament gospel. Yeah. This, that's not it, though, Mm-mm. because God changes. It's just like when people write these uh, books about the God of the Old Testament and how do you reconcile the God of the Old Testament with the God of the New Testament. There's nothing to reconcile. It's the same God. That part. It's the same, the same Missio Dei permeates both Testaments. Yeah. The only issue is that in the one, God is, in essence, preparing things for what uh, Paul would later say in his epistles, in the fullness of time, God sent his son. Yeah. Everything in the Old Testament is leading up to that point when God sent his son. And the New Testament is everything leading from that point. God sent his son. But God's mercy and grace are as evident in the Old Testament as they are in the New Testament. One of those testaments is former and is passing away. The other one is newer and is coming into its fullness. But I also don't want to fall into the other error that someone recently made in a conversation with me uh, where they said that they had been told that there's more grace in the Old Testament than there is in the New Testament. Okay. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, uh, you got to back that up. Yeah. Give me some, give me some data to support that. I, 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 I've, I've never heard anyone say that, but yeah. you got to back that up if you're going to make a statement like that. Yeah. And, and they interpreted me as saying that there was less. I didn't say there was less because, again, my foundation is, God does not change. I am the Lord. I change not. Therefore, you are not consumed. Yeah. Oh, Jacob. That's good. That that's that was mercy and grace right there. Yeah. Because if I were a changeable sword, if I were like Zeus, (laughs) (laughs) you know, thunderbolts galore, you never know when they're going to fall on you. But the God of the Old and New Testaments is the God of all grace. The difference is. The law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No man has seen God at any time, although God made known his ways to Moses, it says in Psalm 119, his acts to the children of Israel. But Jesus Christ revealed the Father. That's how we know him, is in the person of Christ. So... If you don't understand what law does, and and it does its job very well, it reveals sin. The gospel does not reveal sin. The gospel reveals reconciliation from sin. That's good. And that's in both covenants. But if you don't recognize which is which, you'll put them where they don't belong. Mm -hmm. You'll give the gospel to someone who needs to be crushed under the law and you'll crush someone who needs to be restored through the gospel. That's one of the saddest things to see, bro. I want to change the subject, but just hearing you say that, seeing someone who needs to come for the gospel who's already contrite, who's already, like, they're, they're showing contrition. You see them out there and you just see more law heaped upon them it's like we got to get this repentance thing right like yeah and that's true and sometimes it's very subtle too like i remember uh luther talked about sometimes you can you can hear the gospel in something like the ruffling of the leaves and i think what he was getting at is when you do something wrong like the law comes in pretty quick mm-hmm. and let's just say you walking out at night and you hear and the wind blows leaves that sort of on edgeness yeah. 
can be an expression of how bad you feel. Like mm-hmm. you're like, man, is God trying to get me back? Like you're feeling that already. Mm-hmm. So if somebody come in hot thinking, well, I got to give him more of that to make sure he really feels it, that could be the death blow right, to right. somebody. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I use princess a lot of times, especially when like in teenage pregnancies. Well, I've been in church spaces where they wanted the young lady to feel that she dropped the ball in life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Knowing like she not married, she got this kid. Mind you, they not getting on the head of the guy. She didn't get pregnant by herself, but they sort of giving her more law, yeah. thinking that that's going to stop her from doing that again. Yeah. When the law probably already has done its work on this young lady yeah. in terms of just feeling like, and be honest, Man. she's still going, not to go through the, type of the story, but yeah. she's still going through pregnancy. Right. They're worried about her not doing it again. We still got eight more months. Yeah. yeah. Seven more months. And you're just giving law, law, yeah. law, law. It's like, yeah. that's how someone breaks. Yeah. And sometimes, at some point, you have to acknowledge that the good news has to be has to be in here. Somewhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I love Pastor's point, what you were talking about. Sometimes yeah. it's the other way, too. Yeah. Where the, you need to give the person the law. Right. Yeah. In yeah. in those I, I was recently at a March for Life in Lansing. Now Lansing is the state capital in Michigan. So uh in the aftermath of the fall of Roe versus Wade, of course, throughout the country you had these state legislatures that were in some cases writing law to, you know, enshrine the access to abortions. And Michigan is one of those states. So we were there on a cold, rainy day in front of the state capitol. And this lady speaks, this black lady, and she talks about how she saw her big sister get pregnant and how they humiliated her, her big sister. And so she made a decision. She would never go through what her sister went through. Now, she turned around and got pregnant. So you know what she did, right? Yeah. She She made sure she didn't get humiliated like her sister. Mm. Right. Yeah. And uh, once you do it the first time, it gets easier the second. Mm. I think she said she had had five abortions Mm. before um, the love of God was presented to her. And she repented of what she had done, and and she went in a different direction. Well, she couldn't have kids. She got married. Mm. And so they adopted kids. They adopted a bunch of kids and fostered kids. And, And she started working with young ladies who had also had abortions to help them see that there was a way back. And she said she did that because she didn't want them to walk down the path that she had walked, all because she had seen what happened to her big sister. Mm. She's seen, she seen all that law just heaped on her sister. Yeah. No compassion, no comfort of the soul, yeah. nothing. It was like, I refuse to walk down that law-stricken road. Mm-hmm. And I'll fix it so if they, if, if they don't, what they don't know won't hurt me. Yeah, yeah. That's heartbreaking. It's a, it's a, it's a heartbreaking. It's also a beautiful story. Yeah. Not that part. Yeah, I, I get the, it. The part about the, she ended up repenting, coming to Christ, and yeah. since she couldn't have kids, which is a sad consequence yeah. of everything. yeah. Start adopting kids and bringing kids like. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. yeah, praise God. I mean, that's yeah. Through her pain, she was able to love yeah. and and serve neighbor. You know what I mean? Yeah. And extend grace. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's powerful. Now, the, the thing about that now, you know, abortion is like low hanging fruit. You know, we see that that woman, and we know she messed up. She did. You know. Of course, like you pointed out earlier, it's a lot of sometimes the guy, you know, it's, it's like we treat these women like their name is Mary. That part, <laughs> you know, um, I've seen it in churches too. You know, the girl in the choir and the the young handsome 
minister guy that everybody wants, and she thinks she's got him because, you know, she went with him, and, 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 you know, she gets in trouble, but he's the chosen one. Yeah. And he gets to, you know, float on to the next flower. Yeah, still be praised and yeah. regarded highly. And yeah. Yeah, very true. But, see, law and gospel is not, in t- it's not supposed to be a uh, carrot and stick that some people get the carrot and others get the stick. Law and gospel is supposed to be that thing that that tells us what is wrong and then tells us what heals what is wrong. And everybody needs it. Beautiful. Yeah. Everybody. Because we wouldn't know yeah. what was wrong if the law did not sell us. Yeah. Paul said it. I wouldn't have known about covetousness if the law had not said you shall not covet. Yeah. Right. That's good. It's a bl- the law is good. <laughs> it it's is. a blessing. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a bad thing. It's good for us that God gave his law to us. Yeah. This is amazing. I, I never really connect until this conversation literally connected yeah. law gospel with contrition and faith. Like I've always knew the definition. Yeah. Because, you know, I love that definition. Yes. Mm-hmm. But to actually see how law gospel plays inside of it. Yeah. That's amazing. It is, man. And it makes me think about, uh, uh, what is it? I got it right here. Psalm 19. Okay. Verse 12, where it simply says, who can discern his errors? Yeah. Declare me innocent from hidden faults. So I love that because there's this, you know, there's this thing that God's word does is that it does expose to us the things that we don't know, right? So God is is caring for us to give us his law because we don't know. And it's funny that we think we know, though. We yeah. have our pet sins and our favorite things. Like you mentioned, we have low-hanging fruit that we, you know, we always go after. And those things will get a big reaction, yeah. those kind of things. And then we judge other people based on what we can observe about sin. Yeah. Oh, they going to the club every weekend. Oh, this dude selling yeah. drugs. And we just harp on those things. And then we beat our chest because we don't do those. Yeah. You know what I mean? But Paul's like, I'm not aware of anything against me. But then I don't, I don't judge myself because yeah. he knows God sees more clearly inside of me than I do. So I'm going to leave that to him. This psalm right here is confessing the same thing. Who can discern his own errors? Genesis 6, the heart is deceitful and wicked above all things. Who can know it? So it's this thing in which we humble ourselves underneath God's good law because it's informing us you need a Savior. You need Christ for you because... The depth of sin, the bigness of sin is is ever present. You don't understand where all that is. Let me expose that to you out of love. The law is an act of love. You know what I'm saying? Right. Mm-hmm. And when you see yeah. like, yo, damn, I'm, I thought I was killing it because I kicked this habit. Right. When really you just rearrange the furniture in a room. It's like, okay, now you got, that thing may be further in a distance, but mm-hmm. don't get cocky though. Right. You know what I mean? And, and. The law comes in and um, does that work, but then the gospel heals us. It restores us, and it gives us grace. It gives us Christ. You know what I mean? Amen. So that law gospel distinction is helpful to know so that you can always see what's necessary from the good news. Yeah, You know, Go ahead. there are some things I used to say kind of jokingly. Yeah. You know, there are some sins I'm not guilty of because I'm not good enough to pull them off. <laughs> mm, you know, <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, if if I was, you know, the the ugly kid, my man got pious with it, you know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that doesn't keep me from fornicating. That just keeps me from being successful at doing the act. Mm. I'm still stuck with the wanting to do it. <laughs> Very true. You know. Very true. If, yes. If I'm, you know, butterfingered and clumsy. So if I were to try to shoplift, I'd get busted. Yeah. Or when I lie, I've got to tell, yeah. you know, that, that uh, my parents could see every time I'm lying because <laughs> I do whatever. Yeah. So, 
Yeah, I, 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 I stop lying because all I do is get caught. Yeah. It doesn't mean that I no longer have the desire to hide my sin. Mm. It just means that I don't indulge it yeah. because I get caught. Yeah. And so some folk just haven't gotten in trouble because they couldn't find anybody to help them to get into trouble. Yeah. yeah. Doesn't make them morally better. <laughs> they just lacked opportunity. <laughs> that part. <laughs> you know what? But uh before I read some 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 scriptural proofs from mm-hmm. the Augsburg Confession on repentance, it makes me think about, and I'm not gonna say these people were critiquing our podcast, but uh <laughs> there was this thing said where I think people felt like they heard that because the law is so big and, and, and God calls for perfection and that since we admit that we can't keep God's law, the critique was, uh, it sounds like you guys are saying that as Christians, we can't we give a good effort yeah. at keeping God's law. And we shouldn't even try because we know we're going to fail. Right. Some, some persons may have thought they yeah. heard that. Um, but that's not what we're saying. Yeah. We're not saying yeah. that... Um, as Christians, just don't even try because we can't keep it perfectly. Yeah. We know that, one, we have the Holy Spirit who lives in us, right? We have Christ who lives in us. We receive his body and blood. He lives in us. We, we commune with him regularly. Um, but then, because God's law is good and it's his way, we give our best effort and energy at living according to the law. Mm-hmm. And, and where we falter, we know that Our good deeds are filtered through Christ. So we ought to still do them because they're still good. And Jesus is purifying our bad, good efforts Mm -hmm. (laughs) or our good, bad efforts, however you want to say it. So in Christ, yes, we are. We ought to strive to keep the law. That's not what we're we're not saying don't Mm -hmm. strive. But what we're confessing is this, this, this big idea that informs how we move forward as we try to live out our vocation mm-hmm. in our everyday lives. That's what we're getting at when right. we talk about this. And sometimes people, stop trying to be too smart, man. Stop trying to look into something that wasn't said. That's straight <laughs> up, man. <laughs> ain't, ain't, ain't no one said, don't try. Ain't no one said, oh, you trying to read in, peeking the mysteries of behind some, what they really meant was, you yes, ain't no. here. I ain't see you downstairs. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. y'all just want y'all just want to start something. You know what I'm saying? It sounds it sound dumb. Yeah. Realistically, yeah. If we're honest, when it comes to like those things that you're saying, nobody is saying, "Man, I'm be convicted of sin anyway. I might as well go rob a bank." No. In the same breath, we're going to tell you, "Love your neighbor as you love yourself." You mm. wouldn't want someone stealing from you. Don't steal. Yeah. You're hey. still trying, but as far as you keeping the law perfectly, as Jesus says at the end of Matthew 5, be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. Let me be the first to tell you, bro, you're not going to pull it off. If that hurts your feelings, that hurts your feelings. Yeah, it's just the not, truth not of the matter. Not in the way that you're thinking anyway. Yeah, so, when, when people hear that the way they're thinking, no, that ain't going to happen. Yes, yeah, so when, yeah. when we say you can't keep it, we're just being honest with it. But no one's saying God doesn't want you to live a holy life and aim for not sinning or aim for this. No one's saying that. Mm -mm. So someone reading into that, that's, man, people need hobbies. (laughs) Hobbies, man. Go go pick up trash, bro. Love your neighbor, bro. You say, cut your toenails, something. Get get some real life in you, some regular things. Yeah, bro, you know what I'm saying? Go, really. (laughs) You go outside and get some sun. (laughs) Go outside and get some sun, you know what I'm saying? Put some deodorant on. You know, there's a difference between keep the law and do the law. Mm. One word means treasure, guard, esteem. The other means work. Now, God loves absolutely. We're not there yet. That's our goal. That's the mark that we press toward where we love absolutely. But while we're working on getting there, By the help of God and through his grace, uh, we acknowledge that we come short. We ask his forgiveness for those times that 
we didn't see clearly how to love this particular neighbor. Sometimes we, we don't see clearly how to love them, and so we miss it. God never misses. Even his cruel mercies mm. are mercies. Yeah. We're not there. But in the meantime, you do what you know to do, whatever your hand finds to do. You do that with all your strength. Yeah. And God will fix what you break in the process. He'll fix that. Yeah. Um, Beautiful. Uh, it, would be, it would be better for me to stumble trying to serve you than for me to say, well, I don't want to risk it, so I just won't get involved. That's real. Yeah, Pastor makes it sound way nicer than I said it. That's what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love that, man. Let me, uh, if I could, if I could read some of this. I, this was this was helpful for me in terms of what you said, Lex, like seeing the connection between contrition and faith and law and gospel. Like mm-hmm. once, once Melanchthon started running these mugs down, mm-hmm. it was just like, yo, this is crazy. All right, so this is... Uh, Article 12A in mm-hmm. the Apology Uh-oh. of the Augsburg Confession. Ooh. So these are scriptural proofs uh, that just really undergird what we're saying. So uh, number 44, if you got the Evangelical Catholic app, that part, it says, because the confutation, which was a document written to go against the Augsburg Confession, right. it says, because the confutation condemns us for having assigned these two parts to repentance, we must show that scripture expresses these as the chief parts in repentance or conversion. Ooh. Christ says, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. All right, my lady. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Preach. Here, there are two parts, the labor and the burden signify the contrition, anxiety, and terrors of sin and death. To come to Christ is to believe that sins are forgiven for Christ's sake. Hmm. When we believe, our hearts are brought to life by the Holy Spirit through Christ's word. Here, therefore, are these two chief parts, contrition and faith. In Mark 1.15, Christ says, repent and believe in the gospel. In the first clause, he convicts of sin. And in a second, he comforts us and shows the forgiveness of sins. Hmm. Believe the gospel is not the general faith that devils also have, but in the proper sense, it is believing that the forgiveness of sins has been granted for Christ's sake. Hmm. This is revealed in the gospels. You see also here that there that the two parts are joined. Contrition when sins are rebuked and faith when it is said, believe in the gospel. And he goes on for pages, scripture after scripture after scripture, showing those two components. Yeah. You know, Mm -hmm. all who are heavy laden, come to me and receive rest. He's going to constantly show, we're not making this up. Right. And in fact, I love how they're also going to point back to the ancient church, the ancient Mm -hmm. church fathers and say, in fact, this isn't even novel to me and the big homie, Luther. The saints of old have pointed these things out as well. Yeah, one part he's quoting um, Tertullian. That part, yes. Not not, not to get my apology nerd game on, but but Lane is my guy, I mean. Yeah, yeah. 100%. And, And so it's showing that in keeping with the history of the Holy Spirit, in keeping with the history of how the Holy Spirit has taught his church, that's what we're doing. We're saying yeah. the same thing the Holy Spirit has taught his church to say for a long time right. that God speaks in these two words, and that is law and gospel that shows up yeah. even in our contrition and faith. Mm-hmm. So, and, and, and I like how Melanchthon is careful to say, if you want to add the fruit of repentance to this, I'll oblige, I'll yeah. oblige. We're not going to fight that because we know that Christ inherently produces fruit if if mm-hmm. he's the vine yeah. right and we right. are the branches and we're in Christ you're going to produce fruit that's just right. that's what's naturally going to happen so he's like I will oblige that if you want to include that amen but by and large 
the, the, the primary two pillars are going to be contrition and faith. Right. And I love that because once you start to see that, then you start to see it everywhere. Everywhere. You start to notice, man, God has been speaking like this from the first page of the Bible to the last page of the yeah. Bible. And then you mm -hmm. can't say the thing, which I was taught too. I was taught that the Old Testament is mercy. That's what they said at, our, at one of my pit stops along the way. They said that the Old Testament is mercy, meaning it's God withholding his what he could give, mm -hmm. but the New Testament is grace. Yeah. God mm -hmm. giving favor that people don't deserve, that kind of thing. And uh, so I was taught to have that grit to sort of see God in those two different ways, but now doubling back to see, no, God has always been gracious. Yeah. From the beginning, when he's told his people the best way forward, and they said to him, we don't believe that. And he has to come back and heal that brokenness. Yeah. And he does that throughout the whole journey of the life of yeah. his people, yeah. patiently working through them with his two words. And you start to see sort of the personality of God. He's, he really loves us. You were saying that, Pastor Dale, when earlier we were talking on camera, like, mm -hmm. God genuinely loves us, bro. He's Beautiful. not trying to make us try to love him yeah. or to try to make us mm -hmm. think, All right, you know, you got to make me love you by really convincing me that you're worth being loved. Nah, he really loves us, bro. You know what I mean? He even non-Christians, he reigned on the just mm -hmm. and the unjust, yeah. the righteous and the wicked, so to speak. So he's always going about after us with good news, man. Ultimately, that's the the in the end game of forgiveness, as I heard it put, is reconciliation. That's the that's the that's the big thing that God is after, is is, is reconciliation. And uh so it's comforting to know that that's the kind of God we serve. You feel me? Amen, bro. So, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Amen. The study. <laughs> the study. study. <laughs> <laughs>